speaking of Ready Player One, uh, the 80s are very cool again. Thank, thank God I have my white sneakers on. Uh, the 80s is my <laughs> decade. Um, and I love this next app because it, it really takes a retro UI to learn how to code. So it, it takes this retro UI and it puts next to it this either a block-based or a, um, or a text-based code editor and allows you to control um, a character through a puzzle map. Okay, so, I'm excited already. Yes, yeah, so this one is really a treat. So okay. uh, I'll let the uh, engineers at CodeWitch tell you all about it. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Roxy Turner, and I'm here with my colleagues Niha Chowdhury, Xiao Wen Ding, and Mimi Zhao to present CodeWitch, an educational game built using Firebase, Express, React, Redux, React Conva, Blockly, JavaScript Interpreter, uh, Sandbox, and the Ace Editor. So CodeWitch is a game for kids age 5 to 13 learning JavaScript and programming skills, but learning how to program can be difficult and dull. Fortunately, gamification makes the process fun and rewarding, which is where CodeWitch comes in. So not only does our platform fill a gendered gap in the educational technology market, but it provides both block and text-based editors facilitating a learner's transition from a conceptual abstract understanding of programming to a concrete practice of JavaScript skills and syntax. So now my colleague Niha is going to introduce our implementations of Firebase and Canvas. Thanks, Roxy. On the back end, we have used Firebase to store in user information, including the level, badges, and the progress made. Firebase creates a secure system for the user to log in and sign up. With just a single API, the Firebase provides the current data of the user and syncs it in real time. When the user is offline, the real-time database uses local cache to store in the user information and syncs it with the database once the user is online. We use React Conva for creating Canvas illustration in React. This gives us the better ability to create the visual aspect of the game. We use Canvas over other gaming libraries such as Phaser because our input is purely text and block based. However, the Conva layering system made it very difficult to pass the prop down to the child component because of its deep nesting. However, we were able to overcome this by using Redux. Now, I will hand over to Chauvin. She is going to talk about Blockly. Thank you, Niha. Blockly is a visual programming language. A Blockly program is an, a Blockly program is an executable flowchart. Its blocks are highly customizable for not only color and label, but also behavior. For us, there were two challenges. One was to integrate Blockly into a React component that interacts with state changes and lets the user control the behavior of the witch. The other challenge was to hook up Blockly to the JS interpreter, which allows us to safely step through the generated program and update the React store. To make this happen, we created custom blocks in Blockly, extended the Blockly code generator to emit code for controlling the witch, and extended the internal API of JS interpreter so that it can execute the generated code, taking special care to scope variables in such a way that the interpreter always sees the latest React state. Now on to Mimi to talk about text editor. Another major challenge we faced involved interpretation of user input in the text editor mode. In previous iterations of CodeWitch, user input was parsed line by line in order to prevent dangerous code from executing. However, this did not provide users the amount of creativity that we had desired. In order to solve this problem, we created our own external API, which included a JavaScript sandbox. Users can input their solutions into the editor and run the code. The code is then sent to our external API, and the API responds with a list of actions or errors. Our front end then provides users with visual feedback by parsing the response and showing, uh, dispatching either visual actions or displaying errors. Um, by using an interpreter, we are able to provide users more freedom and more creativity. 
We worked really hard and many hours of research and hard work went into making what we hope is a rich and enjoyable user experience. We hope you'll come try CodeWitch at code-witch.firebaseapp.com. Thank you. That just seemed uh, that seemed very well done. I love the uh, I love the whole '80s look. I think in any uh, in any educational coding environment, like you know, it really helps to have that visual feedback because you know errors are tough to read. Um, it's sometimes very intimidating, and I think e even even the translation they were doing from the errors coming in from the back end, parsing them, and then showing things that make sense to the user on the front end. Um, thought was very well done. Um, yeah, that was, okay. go, go ahead. I think it's really cool that they have um, both the block and text editors, because that's one of the questions um, when you're doing sort of block-based programming, is that it actually doesn't really scale that well. Like, complex programs are yeah. pretty hard to write. And so you sort of need to, it's very accessible at first, but you need to come out of it. And they're sort of providing a migration path. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Like, I, this is the first project thing I've seen at, uh, with a blockly as a buildable component, which I like a lot. I like those kind of, you know, for you to get started, but it's nice that they have the back and forth. Yeah. 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 Very impressive. Great job.